exams, uh, classified exam questions. Uh, so quickly, let's just delve into it. We have a, a table here, a figure, figure 3.1 shows part of the thoracic and abdominal cavities of a human. And this is it. They now say name the structure label G, H, and M. I have G, H, and M. Your G here should be your esophagus, your H, um, it's the diaphragm, and M is the large intestine. So, but that's not the area of emphasis because we are looking at um, uh, the endocrine system or hormonal system. So, table 3.1 shows five functions of organs in the abdominal cavity. Complete the table, naming the organ that carry out each function using the latest from figure 3.1 to identify the organ name. One row has been completed for you. So conversion of glucose to glycogen, name of organ and the later that carries it. So find out that it's done in the liver and that's P. At the liver, that's where glucose is converted to glycogen. Then absorption of product of digestion, that, that is done in the ileum or if you write small intestine just to give you your mark and that's l little l here so we now have storage of bile is the gallbladder and that uh, gallbladder is o and um, is it o or q one of those two chemical digestion of protein in an acidic ph takes place in the stomach and that's j stomach and j now, insulin and glucagon are hormones secreted by the pancreas to control the concentration of glucose in food. Now, complete table 3.2 to show how the uptake of glucose by cells and the concentration of glucose in the blood respond when the two hormones are secreted. Use the word increase, decrease, stay the same to complete the table. So, hormone, insulin, uptake of glucose by cells. What will happen to the insulin? Uptake of glucose by cells. Then, insulin concentration will have to increase. And glycogen concentration will decrease. So, insulin increase. Glycogen will decrease. Okay. But, uh, concentration of glucose in the blood. If there is high concentration of glucose in the blood, insulin mm, decrease and glucagon decrease in the uptake of glucose by cell but increase when the concentration of glucose in the blood you have to convert it to glycogen for storage now um state another hormone that influences the concentration of glucose in the blood outside insulin and glucagon is the adrenaline hormone because it's the fight or flight situation it's woven determined how much glucose glycogen should be converted to more glucose for further respiration i think we've looked at that question in the uh, coordination and response um, practice question one now explain why the control of the concentration of glucose in the blood is an example of negative feedback mechanism why is it an example of negative feedback so quickly you see glucose concentration is kept near constant so any change in concentration is detected as a stimulus. Now, if glucose concentration is low, the pancreas is signaled to produce glucagon, which helps to convert the stored glycogen to glucose until the glucose concentration returns to normal. Now, once normal, the pancreas will be signaled to stop the production of glycogen, and this is then the negative feedback. So it helps to bring it and the concentration to a near constant. Now, insulin is a hormone produced produce to control blood glucose level. Diabetes, diabetics uh, do not have a uh, natural ability to control these levels. So what is a hormone? Define it. So it's a chemical messenger secreted by the endocrine glands, transported by the blood, to affect uh, affecting one or two target organs uh, that will give you a mark now with reference to the pancreas and the liver describe the role of insulin in converting blood in controlling blood glucose level so if blood glucose level is high insulin is secreted by the pancreas it passes through the bloodstream to the liver where it stimulates liver to absorb glucose now where is 
where it converts the glucose to glycogen. It also increases respiration by liver cells, which help to reduce the glucose concentration. Now, insulin is a protein. So diabetics can control the blood glucose level artificially by injecting insulin. Now, many medicines are swallowed as tablets. Explain what would happen to the insulin in the stomach if it was swallowed as a tablet. If it's swallowed as a tablet and it gets to the stomach, insulin is a protein. The stomach has protease enzyme. So the, it will begin to break down the insulin into amino acid. So simple. Insulin is a protein, therefore it will be digested and broken down in the stomach by pepsin enzyme into amino acid. So you need to be able to apply your knowledge here. So here I have diagram of the skin. So if you got 3.1, it's a diagram of a human skin in cold weather. So table 3.1 shows the responses of the skin to cold weather. Complete the table by naming the part of the skin that respond to cold weather using the letter P to V from table 3.1. So stand upright to trap air. Which one stand upright to trap air is the hair erectile muscle. So I think I'll go for name of path and hair and that's R. Now constrict to reduce blood flow to the skin. Now constrict to reduce blood flow to the skin. That would be um, the blood vessels S. Yes, these are blood vessels S. Why these are sensory, sensory glands. Now stop producing sweat. That's U sweat glands describe how the nervous system coordinates the response of the skin to cold weather so if the weather is cold how will the nervous system help to control it so simple changes in temperature is detected by receptors cells in the skin which generate electrical impulse now you can see how we are relating it to the previous one now these sensory neurons transport the electrical impulse to the relay neuron in the brain now the relay uh, from the relay neuron to the motor neuron from motor neuron to effector which has to do with the arterials skin and uh, muscles that help to regulate temperature so what will happen arterial will contract or contract sorry and that process is known as vasoconstriction and this will help to reduce the flow of blood to the skin which will reduce heat loss another thing that will take place is shivering which will make muscle cells to respire faster to generate more heat. Now, your hair erectile muscles on the skin will also stand upright to reduce heat loss by radiation. Now, explain how negative feedback is involved in the control of body temperature. So, it's the same thing, similar. So, negative feedback is important to maintain constant internal environment. That's hemostasis. So, once changes in temperature is detected the body will take action to bring it back to the optimum temperature of uh, 37 degrees celsius negative feedback help to bring the temperature close to constant when there is a change in its set limit that is it so how will that be done is how you see in the case of uh, warm weather it will now be vasodilation where the arteries will dilate in order for more blood to flow to the skin in order for it to lose heat so you see is these are some of the things you need to watch the video on um, hormonal system or endocrine system to understand in detail because it's not uh, uh, all the questions we are looking at we're trying as much as we can to cover all aspects of the syllabus that questions have been coming out for in uh, previous years okay this has to be blood samples we are taking from each of the blood group j k l and blah 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 after a meal of rice table 2.1 shows the concentration of glucose in the blood sample after they finish eating a meal of rice now calculate the percentage change you know percentage change is old minus new minus new divide by new times 100 so uh, what is simple so i just did it this way um so we're looking at uh old a bit 
have 181 minus 135. I divide by 135, multiply by 100, give it 34%. So because we are looking at J and L, so in this case, J and L is two value. So it's new minus old divided by old times one hundred over one. Give it that four percent. So uh, let me see J L. Okay. Now control of blood glucose by the liver is an example of hemostasis. Explain how the liver lowers blood glucose concentration when it is too high. When it is too high, what happened? So when the blood glucose concentration is too high, when blood glucose concentration is high, the brain signals the pancreas to produce insulin, which is transported by the blood to the liver. So the liver responds by increasing the uptake of glucose, and the glucose is converted to glycogen, which is stored in the liver, and this is known as a process called glycogenesis. Name one other factors in the body, in the human body, that is also controlled by hemostasis. Temperature. Temperature. Simple. Now, describe how shunt vessels in the skin function to help cool the body when the body temperature is high. So, it's simple. Shunt vessel contract, contract. This will result in more blood flowing to the skin. So, heat from the blood is lost or radiated out of the skin and this will result in vasodilation of arterioles. Now you, you, you remember well um, that shunt vessels are vessels that connect arteries directly to vein without passing through capillaries. So if the shunt vessels contract that means more blood will flow to the capillaries of the skin and more will be lost as a result of radiation. So you can watch um, my video on um, circulatory system uh, or transport system in humans to learn more about the shunt vessels and also if you look at the same endocrine system uh, or hormonal system if you watch the video also i explain uh, how shunt vessels help in control of body temperature now describe how sweat glands and the hair erector muscles function in mammals when the external environment is hot when it's hot the um, what happens to the sweat gland? The sweat sweat gland will lie flat. What's happening to my mouse? Okay. The describe how the sweat gland the sweat gland will lie flat, and the hair erector muscles we also um, relax for the hair to lie flat. So sweat secreted by sweat gland will evaporate to cool the body. Hair erector muscle relax, which make the hair to lie flat, which allow air movement around the skin. Okay, now, so last, uh, the last part of uh, this topic is trophic uh, response in plant. So, we have a, a diagram here, which uh, we say figure 2.3 shows three pots of seedlings that have been kept in different conditions. So, if you look at this already, uh, we have pot P, pot Q, and pot R. Here, these have more leaves, so you find out that it is growing properly, but these have less leaves. So if, ha if it has less leaf, that means there is no magnesium. There will be absence of magnesium for it to photosynthesize properly. It has, because you need magnesium for, to make chlorophyll. And um, another thing is, uh, this should be, is growing towards uh, a particular direction here, which mostly will be light so we're just looking at the diagram before looking at the questions so which mostly will be light so this look like something that have all the nutrients uh, in the right proportion so let's see state the condition in which pot P and Q are kept so P presence of all nutrients and Q no magnesium so look at it P all nutrients so it's growing well and Q no magnesium that's why the leaf number of leaf on the diagram is uh, on the picture is less now state the name of the growth response shown in pot that's pos is, is growing towards light so it, it will be positive phototropism 
Now explain the advantage to the seedling of this growth response. So advantage of seedling to this particular growth response, that's to phototropism. Now if an organism grows towards light, that means it will be able to absorb more sunlight. More sunlight means more rate of photosynthesis. More rate of photosynthesis means more energy. And more energy means the plant will grow well and increase in the biomass. So more light energy absorbed, this will lead to more photosynthesis which will lead to the build-up of more biomass. Now, auxin control the growth response of seedlings. Yeah. Explain how auxins control the growth response of the seedling in pot R. Now, in pot R, we find that it is growing towards um, light. So, how does auxin control that type of growth? Now, auxins are made in the shoot tips or apex, and it moves down the stem. When it moves down the stem, it auxins will be collected in the side that is in the dark side away from the light. So uh, what you to do now, it will now absorb, uh, there will be more absorption of water on those dark side and greater cell elongation on the dark side, which will now make the plant to bend and grow towards uh, sunlight. Okay, I think this should be around the last question we're looking at. Now, a plant called uh, Arabidosis and Tialina was placed on its sides in the dark. So first, we have placed on its sides in the dark. So figure 2.2 is a series of drawing made of the plant over seven days as it responded to a change in its surrounding. Now, state the stimulus to which the plant responded is responding towards gravity. And name the growth response shown. This is the it's growing away from gravity because if it's growing down downwards, then it's growing towards gravity. So this will be negative gravitropism. So growth away from gravity, which is negative gravitropism. Now explain the advantage to plant of this the growth response shown here. So first, the upward grow towards light therefore absorb more light of the stasis, which lead to more growth and build up of biomass now downward will lead to better anchorage and uh, absorb water and more, uh, minerals which is needed for the growth and development now we have this figure 5.1 is an image of a germinating seed showing the growing root this is the growing root of a germinating seed. Describe and explain how the structure seen at J is adapted to its function. So these J's um, root hair cells, they give it a large surface area. So describe root hair cells, long and thin, with a large surface area. So root hair cells is for absorption of water. Uh, it absorbs water by, okay, it's described. So I've described it first. Root hair cells, long and thin, large surface area. That's the description. Then explanation. Uh, root hair cells is majorly meant to absorb water by and minerals also. So water is absorbed by osmosis from a region of high water potential, which is the soil, to a region of low water potential, which is the plant. It also absorbs ion by active transport against the concentration gradient using protein molecules on the cell membranes and energy from respiration in the mitochondria. Now, so you see uh, the roots shown in figure 5.1 is growing downward. This root is growing downward into the soil. Name this process. That's positive gravitropism. Now, name the chemical that controls this process is auxin. Now, there are situations either in wild plants or in the laboratory experiment where roots do not grow downward. Suggest and explain one situation why roots will not grow downward. Uh, if there is light concentration from beneath, if the light is here, then you don't expect the roots to grow downward towards light. That, that's, that's it. So let's see. In space, okay, you can possibly the plant is in space because there is no gravity. Light source below the plant, so roots grow away from light. And uh, remove, possibly they've removed the root tips, which uh, will lead to lack of oxygen, so there won't be any form of proper growth so thank you uh i think we've come to an end of this classified section so uh subscribe and watch out for uh, the other sections